About three months ago I decided to build a custom bioprinter. Now back at the time I didn't really know how to build a 3D printer at all, so I watched a couple of tutorials online and it seemed doable. So I just went with it, ordered a lot of things online and built this custom 3D printer that you can go check out the specifications of in my previous video. Now the first question was what kind of system should it be? I decided to go with an extrusion based 3D system which uses a peristaltic pump to provide the biomaterial. Now the second question was what kind of biomaterial should I use for the first print? And an egg was actually an obvious choice because it's quite available, even though they are a bit pricey right now, they are still quite available. And also because the egg can actually harden or coagulate around 70 degrees and the print bed can reach well above 70 degrees. So uh, this was perfect. Um, of course, in the future, I have in mind also other materials, uh, but right now I will leave you uh, with the video of how this 3D printer can print a fried egg using an actual egg. I know it sounds a bit silly, but it works. Now, before I show you the full time lapse of 3D printing a fried egg from start to finish, I want to explain the steps that made it all work seamlessly. Because trust me, there was a lot of trial and error before I finally got everything synchronized. My first iteration started with a pretty standard setup. A 0.4mm nozzle, a layer by layer printing approach at 0.2mm height and a realistic egg model created with Mashi AI. The idea was simple, mix the whole egg in a single tube and extrude it gradually to build a fried egg. But in reality, well, let's just say that almost every decision at this stage turned out to be the wrong one. The 0.4mm nozzle seemed viable at first and with a lot of tweaking I still believe it's possible, but because the viscosity of the egg whites and egg yolk, it kept clogging constantly. This caused pressure buildup inside the tubing from the peristaltic pump and at one point the pressure got so high that the nozzle literally blew off the tubing. Even after tweaking the layer height settings and e-steps, the prints kept failing. The biggest issue was inconsistent flow of the egg material. And because the delivery wasn't steady, I couldn't set up the reliable print properties, especially for this realistic egg model. There was just no way to predict or control how the egg material would behave. So I had to rethink everything. Instead of trying to print a highly detailed layered egg, I switched to a simplified model using white spirals for the egg whites and smaller elevated spirals for the yolk. To fix the clogging issue I swapped out the 0.4mm nozzle for a 1mm polyethylene nozzle. This helped reduce the pressure buildup and ensured a more consistent flow. But that change almost cost me a microprobe. On the first attempt I didn't set the correct offset and well, this happened. Oh. The print head snapped and I had to reprint some of the parts, but luckily nothing was seriously damaged. Aside from the hardware changes, I had to adapt the firmware as well. I flashed the printer firmware multiple times and modified it in VS Code to set a dummy extruder temperature since I'm not using plastic filament, configure the microprobe to avoid crashes, turn off print bed temperature drop protection so that the printer wouldn't hold mid process and adjust various motion and extrusion parameters for better control over fluid movement. But the firmware alone wasn't enough, the G-code itself needed some modifications. Instead of printing the entire egg in one go, I modified the sequence so that the egg whites are extruded first from one tube, a 3 minute delay is then introduced to allow them to partially coagulate and form a stable base, and then the egg yolk is printed separately from a different tube. And now I can finally show you the promised video of 3D printing a fried egg from start to finish. This time I can actually probably call this custom 3D printer a bioprinter because it will be using a bio material to make stuff. And uh, afterwards we'll explore uh, also other materials. So hopefully we'll get a nice looking fried egg this time. And uh, let's just do it. So let's first load the egg whites.
First the nozzle lowers and begins sprinting in a circular motion extruding the first layer of egg whites. Even though the G-code doesn't explicitly encode the texture, the natural viscosity of the egg whites creates an uneven distribution giving it a realistic texture. This process continues for about 4 minutes forming a solid base. Once complete the nozzle lifts and the remaining egg whites inside the tubing are unloaded. This is followed by a 1 minute pause during which I swap the egg white tube for the egg yolk tube. After loading the egg yolk into the system there is a 3 minute time delay allowing the egg whites to firm up. If you look closely you can actually see steam rising under the LED lights which is pretty cool. Initially I considered homing the X and Y axis and extruding the left or egg whites before switching to the yolk but that seemed wasteful. Instead I opted to just leave the nozzle and let it sit still until the transition between the egg whites and egg yolk is done. Occasionally this swap actually introduced some bubbles but they didn't seem to affect the overall structure of the printed fried egg. Once the print resumes the egg yolk is deposited on top of the egg whites and the result is unlike anything I've seen before. This is to my knowledge the first ever homemade bioprinter that successfully 3D prints a fried egg using a real egg material. I haven't seen anyone attempt this before and the process was an absolute challenge but seeing it work makes all the effort totally worth it. Now moving forward I plan to explore new biomaterials and push the limits of what this printer can achieve. I'm currently awaiting the shipment of a special material that I believe could open new possibilities for different applications. While I'm fully aware that the capabilities of this printer are somewhat limited, I'm excited to experiment and see what else can be done. If you found this project interesting and want to see more experimental 3D printing, make sure to subscribe to the channel and follow me on other social media. And if you'd like to directly support the channel and be part of the future project, check out my Patreon. Every bit of support helps in bringing more unique experiments like this one to life. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.